Hello everyone, I'm Jack Fisher and welcome to my world. And in this video, I have a special message that I'd like to share with the youth of the world. It's a message I heard constantly when I was a kid, and I'll try my best to relate with the same tone and sincerity. Don't do drugs. They're bad for you. Now, I'm sorry if that sounded cynical or sarcastic, but after all these years, it's hard to take those old anti-drug messages seriously. I can't even pretend they were without flaws, even if they had good intentions. But with young people facing a whole host of unprecedented challenges, some of which I never dreamed of as a kid, I think it's worth talking to them about drugs, but not in the way I experienced when I was a kid. You see, we've been telling kids not to do drugs for decades. A lot of the people watching this video right now probably remember hearing about it when they were kids. They got it from churches, politicians, and even kids' shows. Hell, when I was young, you couldn't watch TV for more than 20 minutes before hearing some anti-drug PSA. So the message is out there, and it's not exactly ambiguous. Drugs are bad for you, and you shouldn't do drugs. We get it. It's so belabored at this point that it might as well be background noise. But it's for that very reason that we should scrutinize that message. Because I don't know if anyone's noticed, but despite all these anti-drug ads and programs, drug abuse is still a huge problem. People are still doing illicit drugs, and people are still getting into the drug trade. And every year, thousands of people die as a result. But why is that? Did these people not hear enough anti-drug messages when they were kids? Did they not get the same lectures I got? It's very likely they did. And kids today still get plenty of anti-drug messages. They just don't have that great of an effect. Not nearly as much as parents, police, or politicians would have you believe. But that raises a whole host of other questions. And before I even try asking those questions, I'd like to share a brief personal story about my experience with these anti-drug programs. And once I do, I hope it reveals why their impact was so muted. When I was a kid, the now infamous Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program, better known as DARE, was in full swing. All over the country, many schools and community programs would take time out of their schedule to hold these DARE-sponsored events. They weren't small events either. They often involved major assemblies that everyone had to attend. Some even managed to get minor celebrities to speak at these events. They were meant to be informative, but they always came back to just telling kids not to do drugs. I was in the third grade when I first went through it. I distinctly remember only caring about it because it meant an entire afternoon had been cleared of other schoolwork. That's also how most of my friends at the time saw it. That was just how we prioritized things back then. The program itself wasn't very elaborate. Two men, a D.A.R.E. spokesman and a police officer sat down in front of our class to talk about drugs. And by talk, I mean lecture mostly. They told us what these dangerous drugs were and why we should avoid them. I don't really recall any discussions about addiction or why people do drugs in the first place, which was important information given the subject matter. Everything just revolved around identifying certain drugs and learning to say no to them. Every single drug discussed was painted as this dangerous substance that would kill us if we tried it. And with each passing year, the information they gave seemed more and more absurd. And some of those dangerous drugs, namely marijuana, are now legal in many parts of the country. That alone should say a lot about just how misinformed these programs were. And curiously, the two drugs they never mentioned were alcohol and tobacco which are far more likely to be abused. I know this because I had friends and family members who struggled with them. I'm also sure there was a reason for their omission. I won't claim to know why. It might have to do with these two drugs having multi-billion dollar companies behind them, but I digress. Now what my third grade brain took away from all this was a bit mixed to say the least. Going through this program, these well-meaning adults painted a strange picture of the world. They made it seem like there are these evil, nefarious drug dealers lurking in the shadows, like evil ninjas stalking the innocent. And they were always hoping to attack you on your way home from school, 
but instead of swords or shurikens, they'd shove illegal drugs in your face. Now, as a kid who read a lot of comics and watched plenty of cartoons, I found that to be very strange. Even crazed supervillains had some motivation behind their actions. Just pushing drugs on kids to get them addicted, that didn't make any sense with the way they were presenting it. Not in the real world or any cartoon world that I knew of. But these dare people never talked about that. They never mentioned things like drug cartels, gang violence, or the insane sums of money that drug trafficking generates every year. They just said these drug dealers are evil people who just want to get you addicted to drugs because, well, that's often as far as it went. I honestly wanted to ask questions, but we never got a chance. Again, the whole program is basically a lecture, not a discussion. The only questions they really bothered to answer involved what certain drugs looked like, what they were often called, and why we should say no to them. Things got even more confusing in later years when I went through other parts of the program. That frequently included watching these cheesy, poorly produced videos about the horrors of drugs. We would see footage of ugly drug addicts and people getting arrested, many of which were minorities, mind you. But I'm sure that was just a coincidence. And at no point did we ever learn why these people were addicted or what happened to them after they got arrested. Maybe some of them were mentally ill and couldn't get proper treatment. So they tried something else. Maybe they were veterans still dealing with severe PTSD or runaways trying to flee abusive homes or just people at parties wanting to have a good time. But we never found out because there was just no depth behind the narrative. It was all so basic and bland. Now, I understand keeping things basic for school kids. We're not adults yet. And there are some things about the adult world that kids just aren't ready to handle. But it's also worth noting that kids do have bullshit detectors. They may not be as smart or as knowledgeable as an adult, but they're not stupid. If you'd lie and deceive them, even if it's for a good reason, they will eventually see through it. As a result, the way D.A.R.E. framed drugs, drug dealers, and drug abuse never came off as anything serious. It just felt like another case of adults trying to talk down to kids, treating us like we were idiots who couldn't handle the truth. And many years later, they wonder why we're so skeptical and cynical about authority figures. Given all that, I can honestly say I didn't get much out of D.A.R.E. If anything, it just left me more confused than informed. I understood what drugs were before the program, but the way D.A.R.E. talked about it left little room for nuance. And even though I was just a kid at the time, it wasn't that hard to see the flaws. I remember my parents often saying we had to stop off at the drugstore on the way home. And I knew what they meant. Some of us had prescriptions that needed filling, myself included. My parents even explained it to me. They didn't lie or make excuses. They just told me the truth about these drugs as best they could, and I understood it for the most part, despite my age. Then I go through this program that constantly tells me that drugs are bad and you should never do drugs, but they rarely specify what they mean by quote unquote drugs. Technically, aspirin and cough syrup are drugs. I had taken some of those substances when I was sick. That make me a drug addict? Again, I never got a chance to ask questions to clear that up. And even if they did, something tells me they wouldn't give me complete answers. Once I reached middle school and high school, the D.A.R.E. programs didn't change all that much. They just hammered away at the same message. Somebody from a police department would come to talk to a bunch of students and tell them not to do drugs. But by that point, we were so numb to it that I remember some of my classmates falling asleep or doodling on their notepads the whole time. They knew what these adults were saying. They just didn't care or they felt it was a waste of time. To date, I've never met anyone who says the D.A.R.E. program stopped them from doing drugs. That sentiment is mirrored in the actual research and on the effectiveness of this program. For the most part, it didn't work. I'll even link to some of the research done on the program in the description. There even seemed to increase drug use in certain situations because it told kids that drug use was far more common than it actually was. And the fact they weren't doing drugs somehow made them weird. But again, Kids aren't stupid. Give them a flawed perspective of the world and they will make flawed assumptions. And flawed assumptions tend to feed misguided decisions. Then 
There are also the kids and teenagers who did drugs just to spite adults. It's basically a law of physics. Tell kids not to do something, and they're just going to want to do it more. I honestly don't know how common that was, but I know for certain those people exist. And some of them even went on to have successful, productive lives. Go figure. Looking back on it with the benefit of hindsight, I won't say the D.A.R.E. program was a total farce. I don't doubt for a second that the intentions behind it were good. I know people who've had drug problems. Drug abuse in general is a serious issue, and it does a lot of harm. Kids should know about those harms. But there are far better ways to talk to them about drugs, ways that don't involve lying, deceiving, or showing them poorly produced PSAs. I also feel like D.A.R.E. as a program was incomplete. It talked about drugs, but not the kinds of drugs that people most often abuse, namely alcohol and tobacco. I didn't learn about the substance of those issues until I was almost in college. But by then, most people already knew about those issues from other sources, none of which were affiliated with D.A.R.E. So it really was too late to do anything about it. D.A.R.E. also felt like a missed opportunity because drug addiction has evolved since I was a kid. These days, abuse of prescription drugs is a far more serious issue than crack cocaine ever was. Prescription drug abuse is killing people at a terrible rate, and the way it manifests is nothing like what the D.A.R.E. program described. These days, D.A.R.E. is largely seen as some cheesy relic from the 80s and 90s. But having gone through it personally, I think it's worth scrutinizing beyond the dated references. It showed that we all recognized that there was a drug problem in this country, and we needed to address that problem. We just went about it the wrong way with D.A.R.E. Now, I am not saying that we've fixed our approach with respect to educating kids about drug abuse. People are still using, abusing, and dying from drugs at an alarming rate. And if D.A.R.E. taught us anything, it's that there's plenty of room for improvement. We just have to be willing to be serious, realistic, and understanding of this issue. And if we aren't, the long-term effects could be every bit as bad as drug addiction. Thanks for watching, everyone. And thanks for joining me in my world. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care and stay safe. I'm still tempted to say don't do drugs, but instead, I'll just say be responsible. <laughs>